What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another match preview for you guys today. In this video we are going to be discussing Chelsea versus West Ham. And this match a week or two ago would have been a match where we were talking about Chelsea's potential rise to the top of the Premier League table. But since then we have lost two games on the bounce. The undefeated streak is well and truly in the mud and Chelsea versus West Ham has now become a mid-table clash. The good thing is that results this weekend have gone our way so if we do get a win today we could jump up to the mighty mighty spot of fifth place but we already know that that's just a precursor to Arsenal versus Chelsea which is also yet another must win game if anything that one's a more must win game just for pride if not even for the sake of the three points because if we drop points to Arsenal I really don't want to discuss the mood I'm going to be in for the rest of 2020 but it's Chelsea versus West Ham. It's possibly our biggest bogey team in the Premier League. Now Bournemouth have been relegated, even though Bournemouth look like they're coming back up next season, which is even more jarring. But we already know what West Ham can do to us. We know West Ham, of course, does damage. They did the double over us last season, which the less spoke about, the better. And even in recent history, we've struggled against West Ham. We've got two wins against West Ham in our last seven games. And they love a London derby. And I'm sure our fellow Spurs fans will tell us the exact same thing about games against West Ham. They have this weird thing. They turn into prime Barcelona as soon as they see Spurs or as soon as they see Chelsea. So we do have to be aware of that. But we are going to delve deeper into this game later on in the video. So guys, if you haven't done so already, please hit that like button. Press that subscribe button. Smash the bell notification button as well if you guys haven't done so already. And let's go straight into the Chelsea versus West Ham preview. Our Chelsea's form has dropped off a cliff over the last week. I'm sure you guys remember before the Everton preview me getting way too overly gassed and saying hey if we win our next two games we're guaranteed to either finish first place or second place because Tottenham are facing Liverpool at Anfield and they're guaranteed to drop points and whichever team drops points we can go and capitalize on and we didn't even get a single point in those two match days but that only stands as a point that this Premier League season is massively unpredictable and teams are falling out of the title race and climbing straight back into the mix of things within weeks later. So, all in all, I'm still not too worried about Chelsea's title contention hopes. I'm not saying we're going to win it. I'm not say I've never said since, since the start of the season that we are guaranteed to go outright and win the Premier League. But to say Chelsea are out of the title race, even at this point of the season, I do think is a giant overreaction. Fact is, let's use Everton as an example. Everton barnstormed the start of the season. They were getting results everywhere and everyone was saying that they were going to be title contenders. As soon as the first international break came out, their form completely dropped off a cliff and everyone was saying, nah, they're out for another season. Typical Everton trying to big us all up and then faltering as always. And now look, they've got three wins on the bounce and they're now third place. Obviously, they've been dropped off now. Leicester beat Spurs. But they're still, within the, they're still within the title contention right now. So who's to say that Chelsea are out of the title race just because they lost two games on the bounce? Granted, if we don't beat West Ham, and I'd probably say if we don't beat Arsenal as well instead of one or the other, I'd question our title contention hopes as well. But two results back-to-back, -back, I don't think that that's enough to say Chelsea's completely out of the title race. I do also have in the back of my head that after all the transfer spending that we have done this season, there is no reason for us to be in yet another top four clash. We should be above a top four clash and we shouldn't be in a top four clash this season. At the least, we should be comfortably finishing third. That was the main target for all Chelsea fans going into this season. I still maintain that as our main target. If we finish third place, I'm not going to see it and make any complaints. That's progression to me. Or, or on a points tally basis. If you get 75, 80 points this season, that's a good season for me. And I can take that as progression. If we're in a top four race again, the question is what has really changed between this season and last season. And that's where pressure builds on Frank Lampard more. But right now, I do think Chelsea are in the title race. But on the, on the subject of pressure, pressure is quietly starting to grow on Frank Lampard after these two defeats to Wolves and to Everton. It's mainly due to poor game management and 
also due to the inability to get the best out of Werner and Havertz in the 4 3 3 formation, but it's only slightly building on Frank Lampard. I still don't think both those results are all his fault. I do think the Wolves game he kind of put it on himself a little bit, switching Pulisic and Werner on the wings, and also being his usual over cautious self when it comes to substitutions and taking ages to drop his first sub. But he's had his issues that he's had to deal with as well. We've had injuries to our wingers throughout this season. I think we we're still looking to see if Hakim Ziyech or Callum Hudson Odoi could be fit for this match going into the West Ham game. But we only had one winger for that game against Wolves. We had no wingers going into the game against Everton. So we lacked a lot of whip and we lacked a lot of creativity on the flanks. And it was obvious in the way that we played because all we did was play hoofball and inshallah. And it was desperate football, but it was also desperate times as well without the winger. So I can understand that. Lampard also said fatigue was a huge factor in that loss to Wolves as well with the four-day rest after the game against uh, Everton on the Saturday and even though I do think Wolves played on the Saturday or the Sunday as well, I can understand how that would impact us as a team. So I kind of get that as an excuse. Only kind of because they both played on the weekend too. So we're both fatigued going into the game. I still think mostly it was poor game management that cost us that game. But there's also outside factors that you have to take into account too. That excuse won't be effective tomorrow because we had six days rest. So if we lose, if we drop points, well, I'm not hearing no fatigue excuses. That can't run. Um, personally, I do do think a new formation would be nice personally five at the back might have been the better idea to do against Wolves but we all know hindsight is 2020 so I'm not going to speak too much into it but I would like to see Chelsea play in a 4-4-2 diamond if we drop that that would be a great move from Frank Lampard we need to see more versatility from him Frank Lampard likes to change formations but he also likes to stick to a working formation that means we do get figured out way too easily at times 4-2-3-1 it was working then we did it too much and it got figured out 3-4-3 it was working we did it too much it got figured out 4 Three, three as well. We did it too much. It got figured out. We need to start interchanging formations a little bit more. That's where I think our biggest issue is. And I think the 4-4-2 diamond would be the best for us right now. Our strength is in midfield. Our biggest depth is in midfield right now. So utilize the strength in the middle. And push Timo Werner back into the middle next to Olivier Drew. Because that is where he's at his best when he's feeding off the centre forward. Right now he's hugging the touchline. He's being forced to take on players. And that is not the type of player he is. Timo Werner is at his best when he's running into space. And when he has a chance to make an instinctual finish. Don't give this guy time to think. And don't put this guy on the left as well when his, when his gameplay on the left is so damn predictable. We all know he's a Roma. He don't stick on the left. You stick him there, he's going to do nothing but run and do the bleep test for 90 minutes. And that is it. So I do not want to see it. But... It, for, the, uh, for the West Ham game, 4-4-2, I would really like to see it, even though I don't think we're going to see this formation in the game. And we do need a change-up as well, because West Ham are a tough team. They've got 13 points out of their last 18 games. They've won their last two back-to-back -back away days. And David Moyes is going to want to keep the feel-good factor flowing, especially through Christmas, because fact is, West Ham were relegation candidates at the start of the season. Now they're a point behind us. If they overtake, if they beat us, they overtake take us and I think they go to uh, two points off top four they're in an amazing form this season especially for a team with the players that they have because we all thought they were going down at the start of the season and David Moyes is laughing in our faces so please let's try not an under let's try not to underestimate West Ham I am confident that we can get a victory against them it's just mentally don't be complacent Please, and also game management, please. Let's not just do the same thing for 70 minutes and then change it. Let's actually try and look at the game, see what's not working out early and make changes early because that's where the game's going to be won and lost. Moving on into team news and Hakim Ziyech and Callum Hudson-Odoi will all be taking final tests on the, on the day to see if they have any hope of featuring against West Ham. But other than that, there's no real injury news except for the news yesterday that we're also waiting on Reese James' scan to see if he needs an operation because Reese James has been playing on a knee injury over the last few weeks apparently which is another question I need to ask why has Reese James been playing on an injury the last few weeks like he's been our player of the season so far well one of them at the very least but the fact is we have depth now if Reese James was carrying a little niggle play as for Equator. yeah we might not be as quick going forward on the right hand side but we'd still be defensively solid we all know Aspie's a great 1v1 defender and I back him still 
he's not aging. He's not washed. Well, he is aging a little bit, but he's not washed. He's still a quality. He's still a quality defender. And even if he plays tomorrow, I 100% back has to have a good performance. So. If he's been played injured, I don't know why unless it's been the fact that he hasn't told anyone about it. But those are the only um, injury news for Chelsea. Mikel Antonio might return for the game tomorrow because he loves a game against Chelsea, Dunny. And Cresswell and Bowen are also doubts for West Ham. But we're going to move into the lineup quickly before we end this preview. I said I want to see a 4-4-2. I do think Frank Lampard's going to persist with the 4-3-3, mainly because I, I don't think he's going to change things so early after they're not working. He's going to try and change something a little bit up with the system, but I don't think the 4-3-3 formation is going to change, even though I do want to see it. So we're going to go for the 4-3-3 again. The only thing we're going to do, Christian Pulisic is playing on the left and he is not moving from that left-hand side because that is exactly where we threw the game against Wolves. So 4-3-3. No changes to the back five except Azpilicueta comes in at right back with Reese James a doubt for this match. In midfield, we're going to go for Kante, Mason Mount and Kovacic because I think Kai Havertz definitely deserves a little bit of a break after the last few games he's been having. It's not his fault. He's suffered through COVID a lot worse than most other players did. And I think he's been rushed back a little bit too bad as well. And he's also assimilating to the Premier League. So I understand that he's going to be a slow starting player. And I've already spoken about his stats. Second, second half of the season, Havertz is going to be levels above first, se first half of the season, Havertz anyway. So don't worry too much about him. But we're going to rest him for this game anyway. And up front, Olivier Drude starts in the middle. Timo Werner starts on the right. Uh, who's I say? Christian Pulisic starts on the left. Because at the very least, if Timo Werner's on the right, he can, he can burn players and drop in across for Olivier Drude. And we can take that at the very least. I'm going to go for a 3-1 score prediction. I don't see us keeping a clean sheet in this game. But I do see us leaving with a W. And like I already said, we cannot lose to West Ham. I swear down. I told you already, if, we, if they beat us three games in a row in the Premier League, we are seeing mugs, we are seeing shirts, we are seeing DVDs, we are seeing a whole line of merchandise based on the fact that they did the treble over us and it's going to be utterly embarrassing. Please Chelsea, go and collect the W. But this is the end of the match preview for you guys today. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my comments down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G and I'll see you guys very soon. Take care and up the Chelsea.